In this video, I compare using a rattle can versus an airbrush for your Zenithal highlighting. Before we get into today's video, I do want to just give a shout out to all of my Patreon supporters. Each month we have a Gaming Geek gratitude gift that goes out to select Patreon supporters. And for October of 2020, Nathan received the Few and Cursed Deluxified board game. Sean, AJ, and Richard received a printed copy of Dungeon Crawl. Simon received the laser cut LED light. And finally, Todd received the Hero Quest gift box from Hasbro. If you want to get in on that action, make sure to check out my Patreon page where each month Bob the Beholder does pick various patrons for GGGGs. This is a follow-up from my previous video where I did an experiment trying to see what kind of undercoating was best for use with contrast colors or with glazes. And the conclusion from that was I really like the airbrush Zenithal highlighting the best. I'm a beginner with the airbrush, so a number of you gave some really helpful tips and information. And so this is a follow-up video to really explore one of the questions that came up for me, because a number of you did suggest using a rattle can for your Zenithal highlighting. I did try it before with a rattle can, but I just found that so much paint comes out, it was very difficult to control. A couple of you suggested using Montana Gold. Montana is the brand and gold is the line, and this has less pressure inside of the can, so it's a little bit easier to control. So what I'm gonna do is an experiment on my Shadows of Brimstone miniatures to see whether or not this is a viable alternative to using my airbrush. Now, since having done the first video, I did go through another 100 miniatures for Shadows of Brimstone, and that's gotten me a lot more used to using the airbrush. And again, a couple of you made some suggestions which I'm gonna be exploring during this video. Remember that one of my top priorities is actually painting miniatures as fast as possible. So normally I am a quality over quantity guy, but in this case, I need to have the most efficient and quickest way to pump out all of these miniatures because as I mentioned before, for the next seven months, I'm gonna be receiving and needing to paint at least 200 miniatures per month. And for this first month, I'm actually on track because in the last three months, I've actually managed to paint up these 150 Shadows of Brimstone miniatures. I have just uh, maybe 20 more to finish that set. I also painted up 65 Street Masters miniatures as well. So all of that in just three weeks. Now I know a lot of you, that's not your first priority. You would rather have more quality rather than quantity, but that's why I'm exploring what might be the best and quickest way to do this Zenithal highlighting. So let's go ahead and try out using rattle cans first and then comparing that to the airbrush. This is a paint I use two times ultra cover from Rust-Oleum. I know I'm showing the ultra matte here, but I suggest actually getting the regular flat black and white primer. Uh, the ultra matte version somehow makes it sticky. So here I just cover the entire model just in black first. Here I am now going to do the two times ultra cover white and the regular rattle can spray. And as you can see here, it does push out a lot of paint. So I'm just doing it in short bursts because I don't want to drown out the miniature. Next up is a Montana Gold and this is the regular gold cap. And with these, you need to pull the cap off and pull out this black ring that prevents you from spraying it because these don't come with a top cap. And you can notice right away that the spray is a lot less than with the regular rattle can, the Rust-Oleum. So it makes it a lot easier to sort of control how much paint is going onto the miniature. And in fact, on this piece, I didn't put enough on the front. I should have sprayed it a little bit more. Next, I'm gonna switch out the cap and put on a skinny cap. I grabbed a handful of these. Uh, they sold them separately at the art store and these are specific for Montana spray cans. I don't know if I noticed a huge difference between these different caps, but I think it was helpful just to try them out because overall the Montana Gold with the less pressure does give you more control over how much paint is coming out. 
This is a green cap and supposedly is the finest spray out of all of them. But again, I don't know if I noticed a huge difference. Now, someone suggested using ink. So I ha have this white ink that I'm going to be spraying out of my airbrush. And sure enough, I didn't have to add any water to thin it out or any paint thinner. And then here's my go-to Steinolres uh, Badger Primer. Okay, so here are the results and let's go ahead and start from left to right. So in this first column is the regular spray primer. And again, I use Rust-Oleum 2 times Ultra Cover, which is $4 a can at Walmart. And it is okay, but what you're going to find with all of the spray cans is that the atomization of the particles are going to be pretty large. So you're hitting, it's sort of like when you look at the DPI on a screen. So the dots on the spray cans is just much larger than with the airbrush. So you are getting a Zenithal effect. Like if you look here on the back, that, that's a pretty good highlighting and shading effect with just the regular spray can. But as you saw in the video of when I was actually using it, a ton of spray is coming out. So it is, you can do it, but it's much harder to control. But it is possible. And then when you look at this guy here, I got a lot more paint on him. So there isn't as much shading on him. But you can see some of it on his arm. Let's compare that to the Montana spray. Now, I bought this for, I think it was $7.75, maybe about $8, including tax at Blick Art Store. And this is using the regular cap that comes with it. So here you can see I actually didn't do it justice because I didn't spray enough on there. Uh, I put some on and was um, a little bit hesitant and that's why he's still so dark uh, compared to the regular spray guy, right? Um, but I think what surprised me was I, I was expecting the particles, the, air, um, the spray particles to be a little bit smaller, but it's still pretty big. So it looks fairly grainy. If you look at that flag up here, there's still quite a bit of grain on there. So I don't know. I'm not completely happy with it. Let's go ahead. I think we can tell a little bit better with these guys because they have uh, larger, flatter areas. And again, it is passable, but the grain, you can definitely see the grain on the spray. Now, is it better? than the regular spray primer? I don't know, what do you guys think comparing these two? It, it does look like the Montana spray is a little bit better because it isn't shooting out as much paint so you have a little bit more control. But in terms of the actual grains, you, you know, you can see, you can still see the grain, it's pretty visible. Let's go ahead and check out these other two caps the Montana skinny cap, which is the white and the gray, and then the Montana level one, which is even smaller, which is the green cap. And to be honest, I can't tell much of a difference. And when I was spraying between these two, I couldn't tell much of a difference even with the amount of spray that was coming out, even though theoretically this level one was having less come out than this skinny cap here. So I really couldn't tell that much of a difference and you can still see the sort of the sandy texture because the, gran the granules are still fairly large coming out of that spray can. Uh, same thing over here with the Montana level one cap, the green cap. 
And, and you know, some of the variability comes from how much I'm spraying onto the model. And you can tell here on the back, again, it's just, you can see the spots on them, right? And then here, where I sprayed a little bit less, the shadows are somewhat still darker. But you're still seeing the spots. So obviously, no one is looking at these miniatures this close up. But let's go ahead and compare to the airbrush. So someone in the comments from my first video suggested I use this. FW or Daily Rowney ink. I did try to find the Winsor Newton. I think Winsor Newton has an ink that works better than that, but I they didn't have it at the Blick store that I was at. But here, um, what I found was, even though what was super nice about using the ink is that you don't have to water it down or thin it out at all. So I was able to just put this directly into my airbrush and spray it without adding anything to thin it out. But what I got though was it was too watery and I'm sure this is user error, but look really close here how they're sort of pooling of the paint because it was too wet. So that you have this effect on here. I don't know how well you can see that, but the paint isn't all one flat color because of the pooling because it is so wet onto the miniature. You can more easily see it here on the robe. So see, the reason why it's speckly is because the paint pooled together on this flat surface. So even though it went on smoothly, because of how wet it is, it just pooled together. So, and then here on this model, all of the paint you can tell, again, isn't uniform and just pooled at certain spots. So even though the flow of it is awesome through the airbrush, I don't like how wet it is because of how much it actually pulls. So maybe there's a different technique you're supposed to use with the inks, but the, I, I really didn't like the results here uh, of these inks. Because again, you have the same kind of um, it's not spotting, it's different from the spray cans, but there's a texture to it that, that I don't want, right? And then this is the regular Badger primer that I use. Uh, this is, how do you say that, Steinol Res? Yeah, so this is the primer. And my first time through in, in the first video, I just thinned it out with water, but I did purchase this uh, Vallejo airbrush thinner. So this time I use this and I did notice a difference using this rather than water. It did flow a lot better. And the results, I am the most satisfied with these guys because look, you're not having the dots, the visible dots. It feels like the resolution, again, if, you, if you're thinking about this in terms of screen resolution, this has the highest resolution. And even though I have to mess with the formula to thin it down to get the exactly right ratio, I am liking the result of this a lot better. So this guy might be a little bit hard to see because I probably oversprayed on him, but the transitions are pretty smooth. You're not having any pooling of the paint. So you're not creating an undesired pattern on there. Maybe another guy that might be easier to tell is this one. Now, one of the things that a commentator from my previous video said is you're gonna get more speckling, and that is true. With this thicker paint, I did have some splatter. So see on his armor right there, there's a splatter right there. But for the most part, I think I like this one the best. Because if you compare these two side by side, But I do like this one better because the transitions are smoother. 
So let, let's go ahead and um, compare then between the, my, my favorite one between the two airbrush, which was just using the regular Badger primer. Now let's go over here to the spray can, the Montana spray can, and try to compare these together. And even though you're getting a lighter white on top because there's more paint being applied with the spray cans, again, the transitions and sort of the dots, the visible dots, it's a lot less with the airbrush. It might be more visible here on the backs. So see the, see there how with these two on the outside, uh, you can see the dots from the spray a lot more easily than you can here. The contrast is more because again, you're getting a brighter white and more paint onto these models. But I think I like the subtle difference of this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint these up because like we saw in our original video, once you put the paint on, it does look fairly different. So let's see if we notice any difference or if there's a noticeable difference between sort of the easier method of using the spray can for Xenithal versus the airbrush. Because again, it's still a lot of work to use the airbrush and to have to clean it and all that. So if there isn't a huge difference between the two, then I might go ahead and just opt to use a spray can because it is a lot easier than needing to bring out the airbrush and cleaning it and whatnot. Okay, so here are the results with the paints on them. And as was the case with the first time I tested through in the previous video, the paints really do take away a lot of some of the differences between these various methods. So again, when you look at the paint being on these miniatures, it's a lot harder to tell the differences with the Xenithal and the quality of the paints and the coverage that you're getting. So I think it's hard to tell the difference between these, I don't remember what they're called, uh, these squid guys, these blue squid guys. It's pretty hard to tell the difference. So let's go ahead. I think it's a little bit easier to look at these guys back here. So let's move these out of the way. In particular, I think you can tell a difference when you look at the back of these characters because that's where you're getting the gradation. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So this is the most rough one because this is a regular spray primer. The large size of the aerosol, again, you can definitely see it it's visible, but the differences are really too subtle. So let's grab this one that has the most smooth transition and the smallest aerosol particles. And it is pretty smooth. The transition is fairly smooth from the white xenithal to the black. And then this theoretically is the roughest since it comes out of the regular spray can. And so side by side, the question really becomes how much of a difference can you tell between these two? Again, the granules here are larger as opposed to this side. On the right, it is smoother. But the spray can, the rattle can, it isn't that bad. It isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So again, from the front, you can see some of the granules on the belly, whereas here it's relatively smooth. But for sure, from tabletop, the regular distance that most people will be looking at these miniatures, I don't think most people will be able to tell. It's a little bit more obvious here, and the reason why I pulled these miniatures out is because this is with the ink, and like I said, it 
pulled up into little pools over here and you can tell on the cape as opposed to this one which I used the Badger primer and you can tell that it's just a lot smoother here and then down here on the pants as well since I just put apothecary white as a wash over here so you can really tell that you have spots over here but again I think overall most people aren't going to be able to tell the difference so that's good news for me and with paints that are darker I think it covers up the underpainting more so obviously the differences are going to be washed out the darker the colors are and I think that's why these guys these squid guys you can't tell really which one was used with the rattle can and which one was undercoated with an airbrush because most of these colors are pretty dark. So what are my conclusions after doing this little experiment? I think I was surprised to find out that at the end of the day, using the rattle can for Zenithal highlighting actually wasn't a big step down in terms of quality. The airbrush definitely had smoother transitions and smaller atomized paint, but at the end of the day, I don't think there is a discernible difference, especially from tabletop height. Now, when you're peering at a miniature this closely, obviously you can tell, but from tabletop, most people won't notice the difference. Again, I'm not entering any contests. I need to just get these painted as quickly as possible. And again, my philosophy with painted miniatures is it's always better to field a poorly painted miniature than just gray plastic. That's my philosophy, that's not everyone's philosophy, but I hate playing games with unpainted miniatures. And so for me, I paint and need to paint as many as possible. So for my workflow, I will be using the Montana Gold Spray Paint from here on out. Now it is fairly difficult to get your hands on this because when I went to the store, they only had two of these and I bought them out. And the person there said that Montana isn't shipping more paint because they don't have enough caps and it must be COVID related. But as soon as they get more caps, they're gonna ship these out again. But for now, it might be very difficult, especially to find the white for Montana Gold. If you do have to, I think you can just use your regular white spray primer, which again for me is Rust-Oleum 2 times Ultra Cover. It's relatively cheap, but it does require a lot of control in order to not overspray. But in the meantime, for me, I think this is my favorite method, just using cheap black rattle can for my base coat and then doing the Zenithal highlighting with this. And even though this is about twice the cost of the Rust-Oleum brand, I think because I'm only doing Zenithal highlighting instead of trying to cover the entire miniature, I'll actually be able to probably prime about a thousand miniatures per can. That's my approximation. So it's worth the cost for me to go ahead and use this over the Rust-Oleum brand. The irony though is the weather just now is cooling down uh, during this month of November. And so I'm gonna be very limited in terms of how much I can use rattle cans to prime my models. Temperature here in St. Louis does get down to the single digits and I definitely can't use rattle cans when it's that cold outside. So probably when the weather gets really bad, I will be using the airbrush instead. But I think my regular workflow is gonna be using the rattle cans because it is much quicker than using the airbrush. I have become more proficient at airbrush usage. And again, thanks to all of you who gave suggestions for how to clean out your airbrush. I did try using my Sonic Cleaner that I normally use for my resin prints and it worked fantastic with some simple green in getting the paint off of the parts from my airbrush. Also, I'm following Uncle Adam's advice from Tabletop Minions who suggested keeping the parts of your airbrush constantly submerged or wet. That way it doesn't have chance for paint to dry. So I've been doing that as well. And so far after priming these 150 miniatures, I have had no clogs, zero clogs in my airbrush. So I think that helps out a lot. So like I said, this is my new workflow. So thank you so much. I learned so much from you guys. So I'm grateful for all the comments that you provided. Again, if you have more suggestions, go ahead and comment below. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Again, check out my Patreon page to see what the GGGG is for this month. And I promise it's gonna be a lot because I'm doing a number of Kickstarter reviews in the next couple of weeks with some associated gifts. 
I am really happy with how these models are turning out and how quickly I am able to paint through them. Ultra Quest is going to be coming soon, so that's another 200 miniatures, and that's going to be my primary project for the month of November, and I'll be sure to show you them as well. Happy painting, happy gaming, and we'll see you next time.